my priority is ensuring that I work with them so that they achieve what they want. And yes, I have ideas. I have opinions. There's there's room in the relationship for that. But at the end of the day, it comes home to the client. And so that's something that I pull into my work when I'm podcasting. So Clearly, when I'm doing an interview episode or a coaching call, I want to make sure that I am really centering my guest, that I'm highlighting their experiences and their talents. There's room for me, too, to provide my ideas and my feedback. But at the end of the day, I really want that episode to showcase them. So in that sense, the podcast can be very guest-centered. Welcome to another episode of Listeners to Leads, where I'm helping podcasters launch and maintain a lead-generating show. I'm your host, Alicia Galati, the CEO and head podcast strategist behind Galati Media, a full-service podcast management company. On this show, you'll hear my guests and I discuss everything it takes to launch a successful podcast and keep it running. If you're ready to get leads, land speaking gigs, and create deeper connections with your audience through your podcast, then this is the show for you. Today on the show, we have... Lee, and she is such an incredible human being. I had so much fun chatting with her. She is a coach, and she has a podcast called Coach with Clarity. Everything we're talking about today is about using your coaching skills, if you are a coach, to make you a better podcast interviewer. And she's got some really great strategies, some really great tips on how to make sure that you are utilizing these particular coaching skills, whether you're a coach or not, but these will allow you to ensure that you are a better podcast host. The way that you interview is going to keep your listeners in mind and offer them some actionable strategies and tips that they can take away from your show. She also gives some ways that she has been able to move people from the listeners into leads and engaging with her on social media and engaging with her in email. So definitely listen out for those. Now let's welcome Lee to the show. Hello, Lee. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited Mm -hmm. to chat with you. Can you just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and your podcast? Yes, thank you so much for having me on your show. I am thrilled to be here. My name is Lisha McDonough. I'm the founder of Coach with Clarity, which is a training and education company for life and business coaches. I also host the Coach with Clarity podcast, uh, where we look at what it takes to be a skillful coach and run a strong coaching business. And I've been doing this work for coming up on six years prior to being a coach. I was and and still am a licensed clinical social worker, no longer practicing as a therapist, but still very much draw on my social work and public health roots in my coaching work. I love that so much. So you use these coaching skills to, and you believe that it makes you a better podcast interviewer. But can you tell me a little bit about the format of your podcast first before we dive into that part? Because I've found that coaches, there's so many different ways that you can approach your podcast content as a coach, whether that's through just sharing strategy or tips. I recently heard about someone where she each season is a client, a brand new client, and there's like 10 episodes of them kind of walking through the issues with this client over the season. And it's almost like a reality TV show, right? Where you're like, oh my goodness, like you're cheering them on in their business and you're cheering them on in like their successes and their things. And and you want to know next week what happens next. So I think that's a fascinating way. You also have people who are usually having guests on to help you know, guide their audience. So what does your style look like uh, as a coach who has a podcast? My style, I would describe it as a hybrid approach. So I do have solo episodes where it's just me and the mic and I'm sharing my thoughts, my philosophy on coaching practices or, or business approaches. But then I also do have guest episodes. And even within those, I have two purposes. Sometimes I will bring someone on more like a traditional guest interview where I'm really wanting to learn more about their expertise and how it relates to coaching. And then 
Roughly once a month, give or take, I will also host a coaching call. And so that's where I do bring someone onto the show and I coach them for roughly 30, 35 minutes about a topic that I think would be relevant to anyone listening. So it's really cool. I love those episodes because there's typically solid, actionable strategy that the listener can take away and apply to their business. And they're also seeing me at work. And so they can kind of pull out some of the coaching skills that I use, and maybe they can use that in their coaching approach as well. So those calls are great because they cover so much. I really like having a hybrid approach to my podcast because it just allows for a lot of flexibility. If there's a topic I want to talk about, I can talk about it. I can do a solo episode. If there's a book I've read or a podcast I've listened to, and I think that person is just phenomenal, I can bring them on the show and interview them. And then the coaching calls I really view as my way of being able to support my listeners who maybe want coaching and are willing to come on the show to make it happen. So that's really a different way to serve. I think at the end of the day, that's really how I view my podcast. It is a way that I serve my clients. It is on my spectrum of services. It may not be a paid offering like coaching or my courses or so forth, but it's absolutely an offer. And I love that it can be available to everyone yes. free of charge. I recently chatted with someone earlier on in the show where she talked about how someone found her via a Google search listened to one of her live coaching sessions on her podcast and then became a client. Have you had any experiences like that where it's like someone, maybe they've been following you a while and they listen to that live coaching and they're like, oh, that's what she does. Oh, that's how she helps people. I have. I've had that happen where maybe someone has become a private client of mine. Although truth be told, I, I only work with a handful of private clients right now. Most of my work is devoted to either my certification program, which is where people can come and learn how to be coaches. It's accredited by the International Coaching Federation. So that's really exciting. And a lot of my more content-driven episodes tend to attract people to the certification program. And then on the other side of the house, I have a membership program which is also ICF accredited for continuing education. And one of the highlights are our monthly hot seat coaching calls. So when I have coaching calls on the show, it gives people a sneak peek as to what they can expect in the membership. And so that's been a wonderful way for people to kind of get to try before they buy and realize, oh, there's going to be more of this in the membership and, and then way more than just the coaching calls. So yeah, I find that not only is the podcast a great vehicle to serve, but it also gives people an idea of what they can expect when they work with me. And so they're a more informed consumer. And I just feel like we all win when we come from that perspective. Yes, uh, 100%. On to the coaching skills, because obviously you have your certification, you're already training people, teaching people how to be better coaches and become coaches and things like that. But what are those coaching skills that you help people to master? And how can they then transfer them over into being a better interviewer? I mean, it doesn't even have to be their podcast, right? It could be their Instagram lives or, you know, any type of content that they're creating with a guest. So what are those particular coaching skills first? So I think it's really important before we even get into the skills to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about coaching, because there are a lot of definitions out there. There are a lot of people out there who identify as coaches. Each person tends to have their own philosophy, their own definition of what coaching is. So I want to start by acknowledging the fact that there is such diversity in the field. I think that is a wonderful thing. And when I'm talking about coaching, I'm really looking at a dynamic client-centered co-creative partnership that encourages clients to define and explore and embody their truest expression, mm. which is really broad. But I think there's some key points in there that when we pull those out, we can see how they would apply to podcasting or really any kind of business. Number one, the idea that it's client-centered. So when I'm working with a client, I am interested in their agenda. My priority is ensuring that I work with them so that they achieve what they want. 
And yes, I have ideas. I have opinions. There's, there's room in the relationship for that. But at the end of the day, it comes home to the client. And so that's something that I pull into my work when I'm podcasting. So clearly when I'm doing an interview episode or a coaching call, I want to make sure that I'm really centering my guest, that I'm highlighting their experiences and their talents. There's room for me too, to provide my ideas and my feedback. But at the end of the day, I really want that episode to showcase them. So in that sense, the podcast can be very guest centered. Mm -hmm. And then also at the same time, we want to make sure that it's listener centered. And we can do that in solo episodes. We can do that in our, in our interviews, but really, making sure we understand what is it that our listeners want? Why are they tuning in? Why are they connecting with us? And so how can we cultivate our content and our approach so that we're centering their needs? Because when we're centering the listener, it's going to create a really rewarding experience. And ultimately, if you're doing your podcast as part of your business model, when your listener feels centered, they're going to realize that this is what it's like to work with this person. And I want more of that. So I would say that's that's the first thing. Oh, it's so good. Because so often, and I've listened to shows, which it's getting harder to listen to podcasts as a podcast producer and listening to podcasts so often, I would get very turned off by shows very quickly. <laughs> it could literally be that there's weird background noise or the the audio quality is just bad. The editing isn't good. And so like there's certain things that just like I cannot handle anymore. I found that making sure that we keep the listener in mind is so important. And obviously this is the listeners to leads show. So obviously we're talking about turning your listeners into leads, making money from them, being able to serve them in a way that even if they never pay you a dollar, that they still get value from your show. I also love what you said about making sure that the, about the definition of coaching, because I agree, like there's coaches, coaching, coaches, coaching, coaches, and it gets a little muddied. And it's like, okay, well, but what do you do? And I recently started working with someone who is an energy and leadership coach, absolutely fantastic woman. And there were some things that I wanted to work on as I'm kind of coming up on another, the biorhythm of my life. And I knew I was going to come up on this dip soon. So I was like, okay, let me just be prepared for this. It's been really fantastic working with her. But like, initially I was like, I feel like I need you, but I don't know exactly what you do. So how is it that coaches can communicate that in their content and in their podcasts to really ensure that the people who want to work with them know, hey, okay, I need, this is the person that comes to mind when I have this issue. I think there are a few ways that we can do that. There's two that I want to focus on first. Number one, as a podcaster, as a coach, as a business owner, however you identify, you want to make sure you are really clear about what you stand for and what your business core values are. I think with that, it's also really helpful to know what your personal (laughs) core values are and how those align with or intersect with your business core values. But that's always been a, a huge piece of my work. Again, I mentioned earlier, I was a therapist for about 15 years, and I'm trained in something called acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT. And ACT is all about clarifying one's values and then helping someone take action that are values aligned. Mm. And I've pulled ACT into my coaching work. In fact, my book is called ACT on Your Business because it's all about how we use ACT principles in business and in life. And so first and foremost, we need to know what matters most to us. What do we stand for? How do we want to live our lives? And then how do we want our business to show up and serve our people? So I think number one, when we're clear on those values and we can communicate those to our listeners, to our ideal clients, they're going to sense very quickly whether this is a fit or whether it's not. So number one, I think, is getting really clear on values. And the number two is getting really clear on what your content pillars are. So what are the things that you want to be known for as an expert? And it doesn't have to be, in fact, it shouldn't be like 80 different things. Pick three to five, right? Three to five content pillars that you want 
to be known as an expert in. And then when you're looking at your podcast content calendar, you can decide what topics do I want to talk about? How do those connect with my pillars? I've been guilty of realizing, wow, I have focused almost exclusively on this one pillar for the last month. Maybe I need to go talk about something else. And so that also ensures that there's some diversity of content as well. So values and content pillars, I think, are are really the two fundamentals Uh, to that. And we talk about, I don't call them content pillars. That is definitely a familiar word in the business and the online space. I call them content buckets because I think about... Anytime I would take my my two kids to the splash pad, there's that that big bucket that's like fills up with water and then it fun it like spills over and it funnels down into smaller buckets and spin wheels and all that stuff. And I think of like the big bucket as your brain and all these great ideas and things you want to talk about. And and I want to talk about how my husband's a stay-at-home dad. And I want to talk about podcasting because I love it and it's my business. And I want to talk about my dog who is a rescue dog. And I like dogs too. So that's cool too. But like You can't talk about all those in the same format, right? (laughs) Or you shouldn't, at least, unless it's the Alicia Galati show, and that's what you plan on doing. But even (laughs) unless I'm a celebrity, it's likely that I'm going to get a lot of listens to that. So funneling that down, and like these are the main topics that we're talking about in this space. And then you can always add that other stuff, the stuff that washes over can go on your Instagram stories or wherever it is that you show up most authentically as you. I love that concept. And and I love the metaphor too of the splash pad because that big bug at your brain does have a lot of ideas in there. And if you try to give it all to your listeners at once, it's, they're going to get wiped out, right? It's going to be a deluge. So the idea of being really clear on where that goes and how it funnels and what I want to talk about and when, not only will it make your life easier as a podcaster in terms of planning, but it's also going to enrich your listeners' experience too, because they will know this is what this topic is today. This is what I can expect to get out of it. And then they'll be interested to learn more in future episodes. And so then you You've got a devoted listener. So I really love that metaphor. I think that works beautifully. Going back to the coaching skills, what other things do you do you believe in those coaching skills that can make you a better podcaster and a better interviewer? So within that definition, there's a phrase that I come back to a lot, which is a partnership that empowers. When we think about partnership, ideally, this is a marriage of equals we have stripped away any sort of power imbalance or power dynamics. Like right now in this moment, this is you and me talking. We're colleagues, we're peers, we're friends. We are on the same level and we are partnering together to create what will be an amazing (laughs) episode and listening experience for the listeners, right? And so how do we have that partnership? Well, it's give and take. If I were to come on and essentially have a 15 minute monologue and there was no space for you to talk, to interject, to share your stories, well, that would be really boring. It would be really rude. And I think your listeners would be like, who is this person? Likewise, if all I did was answer like three to five word sentences to your questions, that wouldn't be very engaging Mm. either. And I'll tell you as a podcaster, I have experienced both. I've had people who have given very short answers and I feel like I'm just pulling for more detail. And then I've had people who've come on and just talked for literally 15 to 20 minutes and I haven't even asked a question yet. That's not a partnership. Again, we want to be considerate of the other person's needs and make sure that we're creating space so that we can both bring our magic into the session or into the podcast interview, because that's where that partnership happens. And then that empowers the listener to take all of those juicy details that we're talking about and then apply it in their business or in their life. So I think that partnership element is just as important when it comes to podcasting yes. too. In the guest episode that goes live right before this one, we had Vince, and I'm, I want to say his last name is Warnock. Go check that episode out if you guys haven't listened to it. But he shared some horror stories from pitches he's gotten to interviews he's done. And he mentioned one man who literally stopped him in the middle of the conversation and was like, you're being rude. No, let me finish what I'm saying. Because he was like, oh, let's pull on that. Like, that's a good thought. And he's like, no, I'm talking. And he was like, okay, we need to stop. Like, this is not good. I'm not, this is not going to go live. This is not going to be good for my audience. And the guy like told him off. And I'm like, I can't imagine the, like, 
Oh my God. I can't either. What, what a horrifying experience, right? And yet we do all have those horror stories. That's the other thing is you're in podcasting long enough. You're going to have that kind of guest. You're going to have that kind of experience. I think if you recognize that that is the exception, right. not the norm, and then you create policies and expectations so that your guests know what's coming, we can really minimize that from happening. But it does happen. And so, again, if we think about how can I make this a partnership, how can I make this a win-win so that we all benefit, that is something I definitely do in my coaching, but it's also something that that helps me with my podcasting as well. so good. So what other coaching skills, and I know you have one more that we definitely want to touch on, that is going to help uh, make us better podcasters, better interviewers? You put your heart and your soul into your show. And I want to help you reach all of those potential listeners out there. That's why I'm excited to announce my upcoming podcast marketing workshop. It's about giving you practical tools to grow your audience. You'll learn the secrets to getting your podcast discovered, attracting your dream listeners, and boosting those download numbers. This workshop will be hosted live with a replay available on April 30th. You can sign up by going to galatimedia.com slash workshop. Let's grow our podcasts together. At the heart of strong coaching is the ability to ask powerful questions. Powerful questions are questions that encourage the receiver to reflect, Mm -hmm. to examine, to go deeper. There's also a timing piece too. So when we're asking questions, we're not just interested in the what, but we're interested in the process. We're interested in the how. And asking powerful questions clearly uh, can serve podcasters. Yes, those who have interview podcasts, but I think also those who do solo shows can benefit from it as well, because those powerful questions we're asking our listeners. And so we can frame our, not just our content, but the whole format around what questions can I ask my listeners that's going to stop them in their tracks, that's going to make them think, and that's going to allow them to take what we've talked about and then figure out how to use that to answer the question and take the next step. The thing about powerful questioning and coaching is that, again, coming back to that idea of centering the client, that's exactly what it does. It puts the client in the position of developing insight, discussing next steps. Those all work together to really serve the client and the overall experience. And it also comes from a place of the client being the expert in the client. As a coach, my expertise is in creating that container in which change can occur. I'm the expert in the process, in the journey. I know what works and what to expect. And I'm an expert in asking good questions and helping clients achieve what they want. But I would never presume to be an expert in the client's experience, in their business. That's their territory. So As with coaching, I think that's also really important to remember in podcasting as well. We can be the expert in our field. We can talk about those content buckets or content pillars that really light us up. And we can do that in a way that situates the client as the star in their own story and invites them to figure out, okay, how can I use this for me? And so powerful questioning really allows us to go deeper. It allows the client or the listener to go deeper. And again, it's going to result in better outcomes. Oh, yes. So for a solo episode, do you have any examples in ways that you have used questioning to really engage your audience? I know that taking people from listeners into your DMs, and like, that's really important too. So One thing that comes to mind for me is like making sure at the end you say, if you have any questions, make sure you send me a DM or if, you know, this certain part really touched you or you feel like you need to talk through this with someone, then always hop on a call. But what are some ways that you are able to use like those solo episodes to ask your audience and get your audience to really think about those deep questions? 
At the end of every solo episode I have, I have a segment that I call the clarity in action Mm -hmm. moment. Because again, it's great to talk about all of these things, but if we're not actually applying them, Mm -hmm. then what's the point? So in my clarity in action moments, sometimes they're more directive, especially if it's been an episode where it's more of a here's how to do X, the clarity in action moment will be, okay, here are your two steps for the week. Do this, do that. (laughs) But more often than not, the clarity and action moment is more of a reflective Mm. time. So where I'm literally asking them to consider something. So I'm asking a question. And then I invite them to share their feedback, their insights, what they've developed. And I give them options, whether they want to slide into my DMs on Instagram, whether they want to send me an email. And then over on Instagram or Facebook, we can kind of take that clarity and action moment and continue the discussion there. So I can direct people from the podcast to my social media. I can direct people from social media to the podcast. So it's this really great cycle. And then if you're sending out emails to your listeners, and I hope you are, don't be afraid to ask a question at the end of your email and tell them, hit Mm -hmm. reply. I read every email. And if you're at a point where you can say, I reply to every email, even better. But you can really encourage that engagement. And you can always point back to those other places where they can connect with you, whether it's your podcast, your email list, your social media. No matter where your listener is, you're going to find a way to engage. Uh, This was so good. And I feel like there's so many action steps that people can take. Like, I love that that you add that section at the end of your show in getting people, okay, think about this, consider this. That's absolute gold. And I think people need to start doing that. So if you're listening to the show, your action is to (laughs) consider this. And if it's something that you want to do, so often people get stuck in this idea of, oh, I'm creating content for my audience. I'm creating content for my audience. And then when they reach out to me and they say, well, I'm not getting any money from my podcast or people aren't, they're not moving from listeners into anything else. I'm like, well, do you talk about your stuff? Like, are you inviting them to work with you? And they're like, no, well, there you go. Do that first and then we'll talk. And I I don't, I'm sure you've heard this too. I know sometimes people feel uncomfortable making that ask or talking about it. They feel like, oh, I don't want to be salesy and I don't want to intrude. But the fact of the matter is, if you have a product or a service that you know is amazing, that you feel really strongly about, and if you're listening to the show, I have a feeling you do, well, then what good is it to that person to withhold it? You're not helping them by not sharing it. There are ways to share it that are not high pressure, you know, those kind of smarmy tactics that we've all seen and maybe unfortunately been on the receiving end of. I know I have. That does not have to be how sales is. It really can be more of an invitation. It can be like, hey, I've got this amazing thing. Are you interested? If so, here's how to learn more. It can be as simple as that. But Sometimes we assume if people like me, then they're going to look, they're going to go to my website, they're going to see more. The fact is people are busy and they may want to, they may have the best of intentions, but as soon as your podcast episode's done, they're onto the next one or they're onto the next next task of the day. But if you're really specific and you make it easy for them to follow up and learn more, then they're going to do that. And that's where you see growth in your business as it stems from your podcast. And I I harp on this all the time. So I'm glad that you're reinforcing it. Everybody listen to what Lee is saying. This is important. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much, Lee. This has been so good. If you could just tell everybody where they can hang out with you, where they can buy your book. And I know you have a free Coach with Clarity blueprint. So if you could just tell us where we can find all that. And we will also have all of those links in the show notes. So be sure to check those if you are driving and you're busy, but you still want to connect with Lee. Yes, because I would love to connect with you. I've had so much fun on today's interview. So I would absolutely love to continue the conversation. You can find me over at coachwithclarity.com. That's kind of my home base. You, you can also learn about the Coach with Clarity podcast there as well. I'm on Instagram at Coach with Clarity. As I mentioned before, I wrote my book, Act on Your Business, Braving the Storms of Entrepreneurship and Creating Success Through Meaning, Mindset mm-hmm. and Mindfulness. You can find that at coachwithclarity.com slash 
slash get the book. Or if you head to Amazon and search either my name or act on your business, it'll come up. And I have two resources that may be helpful. If you are a coach or service provider and you want a little support in building your business, I do have my free Coach with Clarity Business Blueprint. It's essentially a 90-day guide to get you up and running. And even though I have an established business, it's a guide I go back to from time to time just to kind of fine tune Mm -hmm. some of the processes I already have in place. So it's a great resource. You can get it at coachwithclarity.com slash blueprint. And the second thing I want to mention is that I believe that every coach Every podcast host, every business owner has a special strength that sets them apart. And from a coaching perspective, I created a quiz that helps you identify what your special strength is and maybe what some of the shadow sides or pitfalls to that strength is. And it's equally as applicable across the board, whether it's podcasting or service-based mm. businesses. So if you go to coachingquiz.com, that one's super easy, coachingquiz.com, you can take the quiz and learn more about it. Awesome. That. Thank you. Now, I, I'm obsessed with quizzes, so... Yeah, that's going to happen. Me too. (laughs) I mean, it could be like, you know, what pizza is your personality? And I will take that quiz. (laughs) So everybody go take the quiz too and go find a pizza one or like a taco one. Which taco fillings are you? Yes. Oh, hello. (laughs) This was so fun. Now I'm hungry. (laughs) Thank you so much, Lee. This has been so fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I've had a great time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Listeners to Leads. If you found something in this episode valuable, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who you know would also get value from it. Want to send me a message? My favorite place to hang out is Instagram. You can find me at alicia.galati. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was from the episode. And don't forget, turning those listeners into leads is actually easy.